<laughs> okay. What is fashion? Fashion is kind of a feeling, man. Cigarette. What is up, you guys? Can you imagine if I started every video like that? Like, what is up, you guys? Who do you think will get Givenchy? Me. I think I will get Givenchy. Givenchy is a hard house to design for, or like it's, it's a hard one to, to get someone who really clicks in with it well because the heritage is kind of complicated. Hubert de Givenchy himself was a couturier, but unlike most other luxury houses, the founder is not the biggest deal at the house. I know, I know, like no matter what I say here, like I'm gonna end up making people angry because there's gonna be people who are like, none of these people, no one is better than Hubert de Givenchy. And then there's gonna be a bunch of people who are like, Ricardo Tisci, get the f out of here. No one is better than Alexander McQueen. And then there will be some like archive guys in their sweaty, disgusting t-shirts that are like, did you know that John Galliano designed for Givenchy for two seasons? In this hypothetical TikTok, they are mispronouncing Givenchy as engagement bait. We opened the last Paris Fashion Week video with a joke about Givenchy where I had been waiting for a super long time to say it. I'll just roll the clip here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Mr. Leonardo Givenchy. Ah, so funny. Okay, just recently in the comments, someone was like, it's pronounced Givenchy. It's really hard to find someone who fits into the mold at Givenchy because there's just such a complicated mold that they've built over time. You want someone who understands all of the codes that Hubert de Givenchy laid down, all of those very complicated like tailoring and dress making and draping codes, then you want someone who's able to kind of follow up to the very large shadow that's cast by Lee McQueen. And you also want someone who can kind of follow up at least a little bit in the feeling of Ricardo Tisci, where there is this kind of dark, sort of goth inspired streetwear. Streetwear is a very loaded word now, but it wasn't back then and hopefully you understand what I mean. There's a lot of different boxes to check in order to get someone who is perfect for Givenchy. Since Ricardo Tisci came in, we've had Claire Wright Keller and Claire Wright Keller as far as I can tell, did a great job. Like, I mean, I, I wasn't enjoying it very much while she was in there because I just wasn't very locked into Givenchy at the time. But like both me and Daniela, predominantly Daniela, is just huge fan of Claire Wright Keller's work there. She was mostly trying to return back to the hair, uh, the heritage Hubert de Givenchy codes that founded the house. I thought Matthew Williams stuff was really good. All of those reviews from our Paris Fashion Week videos where we covered the new work at Givenchy, all of those were being written by Daniela. We'll go to Paris here in a couple of weeks and we're gonna see Matthew's final, final runway show, which is a men's show. I know that as soon as Matthew announced that he was going to leave Givenchy, I know that Daniela immediately was like, Nancy Dojaka, it has to be Nancy Dojaka. And I actually feel like the only thing, the only, do you know the only thing that I've ever thought that might be an issue with that is that we don't have a lot of evidence that Nancy Dojaka can do like gowns. Like, but at the same time, we didn't have any evidence that Matthew Williams could do that either. Recently, I was speaking to someone who thought that Jin Takahashi would make a really good fit there. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Jin Takahashi would be an incredible fit. That actually is, personally, that's my number one pick. And I, I think for Daniela, it's uh, <laughs> it's definitely Nancy Dojaka. A bunch of people have been theorizing that Simone Port Jacques Mousse is going to be taking the helm. I don't think it's any mystery on this channel that we both like Jacques Mousse a whole bunch. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. I would put Simone at a place like Chloe, personally. Also, Simone is the head of an independent fashion brand that is fucking crushing it. I mean, it's, it's as likely as like Rick Owens going to Givenchy. I just don't think that's gonna happen because it's like when you have a home brand that is fulfilling all of your artistic needs, it's certainly paying you enough what motivation is there for going over to a big house? It's like, man, I'm I'm making the big house. But Simone has gone on record in the past saying that he just loves French things. And so the idea of like Hubert, Hubert is like one of our best, like Hubert and Eve and who else? Oh, Christian Dior, maybe Christian Dior. <laughs> Looks like other people's guesses from around comments on the internet are, Sarah Burton is one of them. It seems to me, I mean, I'm, I'm not like an insider on this. It seems like Sarah Burton has mostly just wanted to retire. I mean, I forget exactly how old she is, but she's been at McQueen for so, so long. And when she stepped down away from McQueen, it's like she was McQueen's assistant. She was the actual assistant to the real person of Lee McQueen. Why would you stay there for that long if you then wanted to like shift gears by going to another brand for three years and then retiring? Like that seems like a very strange legacy thing for me to do at least, I don't know. I should probably choose who I'm talking to here. I'll, I'll talk to you all. <laughs> it looks like Alessandro Michele is another one. I, I don't know, it's, it's weird to think about Alessandro being anywhere other than Gucci. 
Um, a lot of people said that he's going to start his own brand. I, I think that is so unlikely. The, the prospect of starting your own brand and like how financially shaky that is as a prospect, I think is really intimidating to people who used to work at really big brands. But I guess Phoebe Philo might be proving me wrong with that. Hyder Ackerman is another one. Hyder might actually be like a good choice. It just doesn't seem like Hyder wants to do very much now. It seems like he is very much in retirement mode, which sort of the millennial version of retirement mode, which is that you like take on a project like twice a year and you just like are mostly having fun and just sort of kicking around and just doing your thing. There are kind of like underdog choices that some people have thrown out like Olivier Faceskins that I think would be a great choice for that. I think he fits like all of the, the boxes, but they, they are looking, it's LVMH. They, they want somebody who is demonstratedly able to like sell lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. And I, I mean, I love Olivier Faceskins. I think he does great work, but I, I don't think that he is the kind of person that LVMH is looking for. So yeah, I mean, lots lots of different options. I, I personally would really, really like to see Jin Takahashi. I think Daniela would really like to see Nancy Dojaka. Um, I, I assume that we'll, uh, I don't know. Push a T. Push a T for Givenchy, honestly. Who is your favorite up and coming designer? That's a great question. I'm so terrible with stuff off the top of my head. So, hey baby, who have we talked about recently as far as like people who we like that are up and coming and stuff? I like Ego a lot. That's Aziz Awokaniron's brand. Ego does good stuff. They're a truly like small independent company. Aziz does a really good job with this stuff. I think it's great. Kartik Research is another incredible one. They're out of India and there, there really is a lot of um, old world technique that is involved in that brand. It's sort of like if Bodhi was a little bit less wacky. The artisanal element of that brand is, is really deeply a part of it. He even bragged to me one time that he was like, there was no electricity involved in the making of these clothes, which is a huge flex. I really like Iray a lot. Um, even, even for things, this is, I mean, this is gonna sound, this is a weird compliment. I'll put it like that. I'm kind of like the king of weird compliments. Understand that I mean this only in a good way. Even for things that Drew Curry makes that I'm like, I personally don't like that article of clothing. I like what went into it and I like the process behind it. I like that as a part of Iray's universe, even if I don't personally love a specific garment from them. There's also, of course, a lot of stuff from Iray that I just straight up fucking love, so. Oh, I'm like literally wearing them right now, so I should probably shout them out. Um, Edward Cumming made this suit. I have been looking for a long time to kind of fulfill this dream of mine of wearing a casual suit regularly. I really like the cut of this suit. You can see that the arms are slightly oversized. There's a little bit of a drop shoulder to the arms. There's no buttons on the sleeves of this suit. Big horn button. I like this big horn button. I love touching this every single time I touch it. But it's so like floppy that it's kind of difficult for this to seem too formal, like I'm like on my way to work or that like I'm a waiter or whatever, especially with the, the detail going down the leg there, um, which is also itself extremely wooly. But yeah, it's, it's not overly skinny. Um, I just, I just really like this suit. I really, what I've been trying to do is just like wear this suit around the house and just when I'm like going grocery shopping and just sort of like whatever I'm doing, I have worn this most, most days in the last like two weeks, I think. I've just sort of put this suit on every day. Oh shit, all I've picked is menswear designer. No, no, well, Edward Cumming mostly makes women's clothes, but we need to pick another women's wear designer. Who, who do you really like right now? You've been freaking out about Delora Fendicoglu a whole bunch. Both of us really like Delara. She seems like a good kind of like follow up to the legacy of Alexander McQueen. And she seems to sort of be in that same mindset of like sort of figuring out ways of doing the like beautiful deathliness. Who else have you really fucked with? Peter Doe, but it's it's like if you're not up on Peter Doe at this point, I don't know what, who, what have you been doing? <laughs> Other ones in women's wear, there's Mame Kuraguchi is a crazy one. I'm really, I get excited every single time we go to her shows. Her, her stuff is buzzing. It's really, really good. Uma Wang is another one. Uma's been around for a while, but she sort of stays under the radar, I think a little bit on purpose, but Uma Wang is fantastic. Boom, it's the end of the video, and I bet y'all never thought you'd see this hallway, did you? Well, now I'm letting you, you I feel like we're growing closer to each other because you, we're, I'm showing you intimate parts of my interior life. This is the hallway that you're, you're looking at the beginning of in videos normally. 
like this thing right here, that's, that's what you're normally seeing in the background of videos. So now you're seeing a different angle of it. This is like that one painting that that one guy made where it's like multiple perspectives on, on the thing. Oh, Picasso. Hey, we, um, so we, we need, you need to join the private discord server. Go make fashion friends. Go like hang out with people who are really passionate about clothes and who are just kind of figuring it out just like you and I are. I mean, we have people on there who are academics who work in, I think that the academic who's most active right now, it works in architecture, but he is deeply interested in fashion. We have people there who are stylists. We have some models on the Discord server. We have a ton of makers, just people who are like, I am very, very fixated on making clothes. Tons of people who work very closely with brands that I, I feel like if I said who this was, they would be mad at me, so I can't say it. But if it ever comes up in conversation on the Discord, you know, it's all fair game. It really is a special place. When I was when I was really young, I would get on this fashion forum that was called uh, Care Tags, which I still will go back to to see if anybody's active on there. It's, it's kind of dead. But I, I remember originally finding care tags and thinking that it was such a special place because all of the other alternatives at the time while being extremely valuable were just very intense places they were not nice places to hang out on the internet i've always looked at that community as like the model for how things are done on our discord server i can set a tone i can encourage a certain direction for things but ultimately a community is as good as the people that are inside of it and i have just been blessed with an unbelievable group of people and um they're, they're smart they're very welcoming. They're so kind to new people. We've had people come in and ask very introductory questions and those people are treated with such respect that is not seen very often in online fashion communities, which tend to be toxic places. I am exceptionally proud of the people that are on this server. So if you wanna be a part of it, it's a cool place. I hope you will be a part of it. And also that you just wanna support the channel generally. It's just great to have a place that isn't isn't toxic. That seems to be the underlying theme of most fashion communities online and, and honestly most most hyper niche communities online generally. They just tend to be places where um, one type of bullying or another just tends to prevail. And um, it's, it's cool to have a place where um, people seem to be very intentionally building each other up um, sharing information and sharing advice and, and giving, just helping each other. It's, it's very cool. I'm, I'm proud of everybody we have in there. Join it up. It's only available through the Patreon. You join the Patreon and then we send you instructions on how to join the Discord server. Support the motherfucking Patreon. See ya.